ang atong buhaton karon atong limpihan tong ato ang Pernery Garden para nga uh, pagdaghan na sa ato ang mga bisita so ang ato ang pern daghan siya budugang po tagtanom sa other area pa nga ato ang katamnan so na form ang Balin sa Saya Twin Lakes Farmers Association pinaagi sa ato ang Office of the Provincial Government former George Arnice so karon nga ginahinay na ugkuan nga nanang ato ang mga ecotourism activity ato ang mga guiding ato ang mga uh, boating activity so nakalikom na nakaern nagpundo ang ato ang Balinsa sa Twin Lakes Farmers Association nga makapadalagan nga kanang kami ragyod sa pinagi sa mo ang mga opisyalis ug mga membro nakasugod kog trabaho dire 2009 sa pagsugod nako na og trabaho daghan ming bisita itong mga panahon na pagkakaron nga naatay covid mingaw na tagbisita dire e kumpara sa una lahi na gud kaayo may dire sir pag wala nang turista murag one me kadu bisa covid minus mig pering hambuyan pagkakaron Wala income kayo. Tapos, di pumimu ka, kita ang lain terbaho. Napagtahan ko tanan. Sa una nga, dagang bisita, medyo okay kayo ang pinagabuhi. Karoon nga wala na. Luga-luga ko tayo eh. Ang ibuhat ko rin sa pagka naroon nga COVID pata. Nagas ang lubi. Ipabaligyan-baligyan kung may pinagmay nga manok. Pumuhaan sa pinagabuyan. Tapos na aram may mga tanong po dito sa akong pares. Muti, langhoy, saging. Pag-abag rin gusto ang pinagabuyan. Ay, isip mo kayo, wala mo tayo kapuntahan. Before na COVID, sir, kuan ka ng amuang maluto dire na kami makahurot o mga pulo ka kilong manok. Sa una mo mo ni among katong before COVID mo ni amuang mabutangan o mga order pasunod. Number one, hantod unsang kuan. Lugos na mong ganit na mong masunod o kuan, sir, luto kay tungod sa kadaghan. Pagkakaroon, sir, kuan, mingaw, nakaayo. Naganis ay skaadlaw, walay magpaluto na mudire. Alahay rin ko kayo sa una, kayo karoon sa una, magsinubura man ang pinagabuhi. Lagan ang mga turist, nagalahay ang lugar. Eh, kung para pagkakaroon, luti mo taga-atuan din eh. Wala na gani. Gajuti mudire. Anay, panahon nga wagoy bisita. Wagoy may income at lag pulis ang mga. Sa wala purong sakita, ako motor, dire na ko na impas. Siya mara kabulan ako motor, ikas pagkuha na impas, dire. Anay rin ang bangka-bangka. Kaya dagko mo itong income. Karon, hindi ko sa kita kapalit sa kilong bugas. May wak na gawin mo, income na ito ini. Oh, before COVID, maka-income na ay 20,000 sa iskaadlaw na siya. Dayon karon gikan atong July 18, nag-open mi dire. Gamay good may kayong income matag-adlaw na aragoy kuha na itag 200 kapin sa matag-adlaw. So, karong uh, panahon na layo o kayo sa una? Kaya sa una, video kita sa kaadlaw, yun ang hurot ka ano sa kasimahan na. Kumpara ka ron. Nadagan po kayo. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Sa mandulupi, di ka pa 
To our brothers and sisters who have contracted and are suffering due to the coronavirus disease, we pray that God's healing hand may rest upon you. To medical doctors, nurses, and the supporting staff who are in the front line of the fight against COVID-19, may the good Lord sustain you and inspire you to render your life-saving services with due care, love, and compassion. To all those who have lost their loved ones due to the coronavirus outbreak, we convey our deepest sympathies. We pray that their souls, through God's mercy, may rest in eternal peace. We pray that God may grant all bereaved families His consolation and strengthen their faith and hope in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Department of Trade and Industry Region 7's live show for Youth Entrepreneurship Program, or yeah, yes. My name is G, and I will be your host for today. Kamusta tayong lahat? How is quarantine life? I hope that your week is really going well. At sana, lahat tayo ay happy at healthy by staying fit taking vitamins, eating healthy, and drinking lots of liquids. So stay hydrated, guys. So for today's webinar, we will be focusing on empowering our youth so that we can inspire them to become great entrepreneurs for the Philippines in the future. Yes, that is why DTI Region 7 came up with a webinar series that we will be calling Youth Entrepreneurship Program or YEP. So actually, we've done this last year, and nothing is keeping us from giving you more value this year round. And for this afternoon's episode, considering that a lot of youth nowadays are starting to make success online, we have invited some of our successful young entrepreneurs to give talks on building your personal brand, YouTube marketing, financial tips, and so much more. So of course, guys, like our previous webinars, after we get to listen to our young entrepreneurs or the speakers we have invited, we will have a sit-down chat with them to give us a chance to pick their brains and learn more from them. That's very exciting, right? So let's not hold you long. Let's kick things off with DTI Assistant Regional Director, Nanette Arbon, for her opening remarks. Hi, Ms. Nanette. How are you doing? Hi, G. How are you? I'm, I'm super, super good. So, Ms. Nanette, I won't hold you long. I'll let you take it away. Okay. Um, to our valued guests, Miss Maria Paula Tolentino of Sam Scribe Publishing House, Mr. David Jones Kua of Republic Group of Companies, Miss Rhea Alducente, Mr. Vernon Joseph Go, partners, DTI colleagues, and to our valued young participants, good afternoon. Our country is affluent with a young and vibrant population. And most members of this young population comprise more than half of the total number of Filipino entrepreneurs. This means that you, our youth, have a penchant for entrepreneurship. And that there is an opportunity to hone you with fundamental skills and develop your entrepreneurial capabilities in order to succeed in a competitive business environment. And we in DTI can help you. We bring you the Youth Entrepreneurship Program, or YEP, a nationwide program that aims to help you young Filipinos develop your entrepreneurial skills through a comprehensive package of knowledge exchange seminars, workshops, and activities. This program was specially crafted 
for you because we see your crucial role in economic development and sustainability. We want to help you nurture your potential as entrepreneurs and resources for a skilled workforce. After having you all with us today, we, as we commemorate the opening of the first of four series of the DTI-7 Youth Entrepreneurship Program, it reinforces our hope and belief in the Filipino youth. I want to thank you and congratulate you for being here and for making the conscious effort to learn, relearn, and unlearn in order to enhance yourselves. Thank you for joining us in the advocacy for youth empowerment and for building on your inherent abilities as tools for growth and development, most especially in your willingness to use these abilities to build a brighter tomorrow. It is with my, of my greatest pleasure to be among you today. I am enlivened with your vigor and determination for success amidst the challenges posed by this unprecedented pandemic. This is the type of determination in life that inspires us to do more and be more with you. We want to be part of your beautiful journey towards success and towards a better future for you and for the country. I hope that today's session will be worthwhile and may you end this day full of newfound knowledge and appreciation for entrepreneurship. I hope also for DTI to become your partner in your growth process and success. Thank you also to GBG Cebu, our partner for this YEP series in DTI 7. This bunch of millennials helped us design the program from their perspective, backed by a survey of what topics matter most to this specific demographic. Thanks, G, for hosting us this afternoon. So let's all sit back to a great afternoon of learning, fun, and introspection. Thank you. Thank you so much, ARDR Bon. Really thank you, and we sincerely thank you for, you know, banking with the youth. Thank you so much, <laughs> ARD. And, um... Of course, before we go ahead with our program, let us first get to know the young entrepreneurs that we have invited for this afternoon. I am really excited. And what topic they will be talking about. So first up, we have Paula Talentino, the Chief Content Officer and Founder of Samscribe Publishing House, a boutique digital communications company set up in 2014. She is also connected to the following organizations in the following capacities. Lead for Online Reputation Management under the OLI Consulting Group. Um, it's a trustee and the Media and Communications Officer for Diwata, Women in Resource Development Incorporated, and a member of Philippine Young Entrepreneurs Associations, or PYEA. She will be giving a talk on personal branding for young entrepreneurs. So watch out, guys. Next, we're very honored that we have David Jones Kua aka david wild x who is a content creator best known for his web series dare david on by tv as well as producing other by tv shows like hi malaya and laisha kadi with alam garcia david was also the editor of behind a blog by chris oi a national bestseller by one of the country's biggest lifestyle content creator he will be giving us a talk on the five masks for online businesses next up we have Rhea Aldecente, who is a YouTube content strategist. She is also a YouTube Next Up 2019 winner and a digital content manager helping purpose-driven entrepreneurs building authority and monetize their expertise through the power of YouTube. Her talk this afternoon will be about how to provide value to the community through YouTube marketing. Last but definitely not the least is Vernon Joseph Ko who is a registered financial planner with more than 10 years of experience under his belt, a business columnist and an award-winning content creator. Vernon also has delivered hundreds of talks as public speaker from small classrooms up until massive auditoriums. And this afternoon, he will be sharing his insights about personal financial tips for us youth. At ngayon, kilala na natin ang ating lineup of speakers Let's get the ball rolling. As we all know, almost everyone we know in the digital space trying to ply their own wares. So it is really important to create and build your own brand to have that edge over other content creators in the internet. So to give us more insights about that and tips, please help me welcome 
Paula Talentino, who will be giving a talk on personal branding for young entrepreneurs. Hi, Paula. How are you doing? Hi, G. It's wonderful to be here. Uh, thank you, DTI, BYEA, and the rest of the YEP team who have uh, invited me to, to be part of the show. Yeah, it's so nice to also have you, Paula. I won't hold you for long. The screen is yours. Okay, cool. Good morning, everyone. Um, this is Paula Tolentino of uh, Samscribe Publishing House. I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, to thank uh, my colleagues from uh, YEP and as well as uh, the the DTI and the PYEA who who are helping support this this program for young entrepreneurs. Okay, so. My topic right now is personal branding for young entrepreneurs. Okay, what you saw earlier was um, my short video for Samscribe. Basically, uh, Samscribe does uh, personal communications for small to medium enterprises. I handle social media, content marketing, writing, journalism, video editing, etc. So, uh, this company has been up for um, since 2014. I am its chief content officer and founder, and um, so far it's been a, it's been a, a great um, a great ride. And uh, I still continue to do what I do best. And I would like to share with you my my journey through personal branding. So here goes. Okay, introductions. So I've I've already mentioned about uh, Samscribe. And I also, just for everyone's information, I am also the lead for online rep reputation management for the Oli Consulting Group, Inc. It's a business consultancy firm based in Makati City where I handle digital, digital PR and everything related to media. Okay, next. Going back to the subject, personal branding. All right. Um, when I first got this... Uh, this um this topic uh it, it just uh, hit home okay so when people think of a personal brand they, they automatically think it's something fake disingenuous and inauthentic some even believe that it would do more harm than good but i am telling you a personal brand that is not shaped by you will be formed and shaped by others do you want to take that risk why does personal branding matter so much? When I first started my journey to personal branding, I wanted to start where I thought I was quite experienced in storytelling. My personal website is a testament to that journey. It's been a roller coaster of experiments, but steadily I am finding my authentic voice through the brand I put out in the world. Although I can't guarantee you that a personal brand will solve all your business problems, I can, however, assure you that when done with intention and purpose, a personal brand will enable you to meet interesting people and unlock disruptive opportunities. So how did I start and what did I do? First, let's lay the foundations, values. Uh, for me, personal branding should also be purposeful. So I have four key values that I try to inculcate in everything that I do especially in branding. So one is uh, integrity. This is foundational to any brand. Integrity and character is your superpower in a world where people and businesses are flaky and dishonorable. Regardless of your organization, no matter what your current job is, what project you happen to be working on, integrity and character is what will stand the test of time. Always keep in mind the impact you leave on others. Because when all is said and done, 
This is the only type of brand that really matters. Next, consistency. You have to demonstrate consistency across your communication, gravitas, and appearance. Don't underestimate how tiny inconsistencies can derail personal brand effectiveness. So whether you're creating a wild, incredibly out there fun brand or one that's a bit more on the conservative corporate side, consistency is key. Next, innovation. It's important to have a good hard failure, especially when you're young. Listen, entrepreneurs, ah, yung mga bata dyan. Sure, you take a lot of calculated risks, but the truly wise will learn from the mistakes of others. Use that knowledge to find ways on how to make things better for those around you, your community, and your town. And what can happen is never as frightening as not trying at all. You'll never achieve the best branding until you push past your comfort zone. The very best brands always come from repeated trials and errors. They constantly think on their feet, and innovation always comes second nature. Lastly, legacy building. Your personal brand should follow you where, everywhere you go. It needs to be an authentic manifestation of who you are and amplify what you believe in. With this in mind, your personal brand is not only a reflection of a series of job functions, like marketing, finance, or creatives, but also your ideals such as giving back, thoughtful leadership, or mentorship. Building a personal brand is much, much bigger than building a business. The only exit strategy to a personal brand is legacy. Next, personal branding versus business branding. What's the difference? Note that personal branding and business branding aren't the same things. A business brand is built around how you want your business to be identified and differentiated from other businesses, while a personal brand is built around how you want others to identify you, your lifestyle, your values, personality, and interests. Branding doesn't mean showcasing yourself as something you're not. Instead, it is used to sincerely and strategically project your authentic self to clients and customers. In the same way, your personal brand should tell your audience about your skills, achievements, beliefs, and values. Recognizing your brand assets. When building a strong foundation for your personal brand, start by taking your existing brand assets into account. What are these? Number one, it's the skills you possess as well as, well as the training, certifications, achievements, and awards you've received. Second, the various industries, fields, or topics you're interested in or passionate about. The core values you hold dear and the things you stand for. These are your brand assets. Next, formulating your personal brand. The key questions to answer when formulating your personal brand, ask yourself, what's your brand vision? What do you want to be recognized for? Why is building a personal brand important to you? What message do you want to get across to your target audience? These questions will help you formulate your brand vision and message. Next, authenticity. Personal branding is telling the story that is authentically you. In summary, personal branding is authenticity. It is your skills and survival instinct that needs to be told. The only risks in personal branding is that you might actually make an impact. You may help someone out of that toxic job. You may inspire someone to carve their own creative path. You might make a difference in this world. What a huge responsibility personal branding is. So you can either rise up now and tell the story that is authentically you, or you can step back into the shadow where no one sees and no one hears. And you can just watch the world go by. Or the alternative is use your personal story, your personal brand to help the world with your message. If you go back to your darkest hours, may it be a loss, death, heartbreak, financial ruin, bankruptcy, health crisis, etc. 
your message comes from that mess. And it is your skills and survival instinct that took you from that mess to your success. And no matter where you are, your story may be the only thing that connects you to the rest of us. So thank you very much for your time. I would like to thank uh, the DTI, PYEA, and the rest of the YEP team for giving me this opportunity to speak in this event. Thank you. Please get in touch through the following details. Thank you so much for that very insightful talk, Paula. It's very important, you know, to keep grounded with values and make it part of your brand. So before anything else, hi, everyone. I'm um, watching us from different parts of the world and, um, you know, different parts of the Philippines. So thank you so much, Paula. Uh, let's continue learning from our inspiring guest entrepreneurs. We'll see you later, Paula. Um, next up is one of the best content creators in the country. Let us all welcome David Jones Kua or David Wildex, who will give us a talk on five must of online businesses. Hi, David. Kumusta? Hi. Uh, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Chilling at I'm home. So yeah, I'm also excited for your content. So yeah, oh, I won't hold you for long. I'll let you take away the screen. Go, David. Thank you. Mmm, tastes like consumerism. Hi, my name is David. Hey, David. Yes, David. Why is your talk pre-recorded? Oh, that's easy. I think Zoom talks are stupid. And why? Because I am a performer. I thrive off the energy of an audience. And if I can't see or hear anybody, I might as well be talking to a wall, which I've been doing for the rest of quarantine. Also, special effects and background music. Can't do that lab now, can you? Today, we're supposed to talk about something we're passionate about. But I have a habit of turning my passions into my profession. So, the only hobby I have left is... Our biggest deals with free shipping! Busta okay. shopping, so shoppy! Yes, my only hobby is spending money. <laughs> the world has been thrust into isolation, but luckily we have the internet. And one can argue, life didn't really stop, it just moved online. Which means a lot of businesses that were reluctant to go digital are now forced to. And I know the internet can be a confusing place, but we are here to help. Now, most videos and blogs will tell you, Make a website, be online. Well, duh. This is a practical guide on how your business should be on the internet from the perspective of a consumer. Now, what makes me credible to talk about this? Girl, and that was just last Tuesday. Now you also might be thinking, I've been doing business for 50 years. Why should I listen to this little gay boy? Well, see, that was nice when you had your brick and mortar store with your great location and high foot traffic, but this is the internet. There's 50 of you selling the same shit, so listen up, bitch. For this talk, we will be using the philosophy of one of the most successful e-commerce sites in the world, Amazon. A few years ago, the tech world's buzzword was frictionless. What does it mean to be frictionless? It means making it easy for your customers from start to finish and removing as many bottlenecks and stops as possible. Why? Because as you know, if you give a customer enough stops and bottlenecks, they will have time to realize, do I really need this new hydro flask? Who's gonna see me drink from a reusable bottle in a the pandemic? They'll think, doesn't he have any glasses at home? Here is a five point checklist for any business going online. And it's about time. Number one, make yourself findable. You are not an online personality picking a platform based on how authentic it is to you. You are a company trying to make money, so you need to be everywhere. The more findable you are, the more leads you can generate. Because I wanna be where the people are. That's right, Ariel. If you are an SME, consider Facebook or Instagram. Both have shop options. And I personally have bought a lot of things from Facebook Marketplace, the divisoria of the internet. If you are a larger business, you might want to consider having your own e-commerce shop. There are tools online like Shopify, which allows you to create a website focused on e-commerce. In fact, Kylie Cosmetics was built on Shopify. And if you don't know what Kylie Cosmetics is, damn girl, you really do need our help. It also helps to apply to existing e-commerce sites like Lazada and Shopee. Or if you're a food-based business, apps like GrabFood. Especially if you're a food-based business because people are moody when they're hungry and they ain't got time to wait. Number two, leave nothing to the imagination. 
Because we're on the internet, customers don't have the ability to touch and hold the products in their hands before making a purchase. It is your job to make customers feel like they're actually holding the product in their hands. Be specific about specifications, such as dimensions, weight, wattages, voltages, and other electrical shit that I don't understand and need to ask my straight friends. Nice photos with great lighting are great for ads. Consumers prefer products in real-life settings for listings. Having customers leave photos or reviews is probably one of the biggest deciding factors when making purchases online. All these things make it easier for a customer when making a decision. Number three, response time or, but daddy, I want him now. As a consumer, I'm clicking every possible option of the same product and messaging every seller. And because I'm behind the keyboard, I have no shame in ghosting you when I find you for a better option. I mean, people do it for dating, why wouldn't they do it for things they're buying? A good rule of thumb, if the item is cheaper, consumers will have less patience. Consumers are more willing to wait out more expensive products for better options. Number four, payment methods. Creating more payment options does not cost you anything. COD is great, but do you really want to be touching money during a pandemic? Girl, you don't know where that bill has been. Actually, you know where that bill has been. You have put that bill in places that you won't tell your mother. Bank transfers are a great option, but so are fintech apps like Gcash. Make it easy for your customer to pay you. Number five, there's so many delivery apps now and we're all much better for it. People who shop online are already used to shouldering delivery costs and don't mind booking the app themselves, especially when they're using credits on apps like Grab and Lalamoo. For shipments nationwide, it's good for you to keep a record of how much it would cost to ship to the major cities in the country. Since you already know the size and weight, every courier has a rate calculator on their website. Here's a bonus tip, have a script and images. These will help you avoid misinformation and miscommunication. Now, graphics are great for showcasing products, but I hate, absolutely hate, when sellers put account numbers, addresses, and phone numbers as graphics. This may help you, but it makes it difficult for the consumer as they need to input these numbers themselves, leaving room for error on something as delicate as an account number. These types of information should be sent as a text. That way, consumers can copy these numbers and paste them when they're switching apps. Of course, the most important thing is to observe consumer behavior and adjust accordingly. Thanks for watching and have a great hypercapitalistic day. Wow, David, that was very informative talk, like blown by the straight to the point, fast paced, informative <laughs> format. And we'll have more of David's thoughts later. So stay tuned. Thank you so much, David. And um, yeah, up next, we have Rhea Aldecente, who will be giving a talk on how to provide value to the community through YouTube marketing. Hi, Rhea. How are you doing? Hey G, I'm good. How about you? Yeah, I am excited for your talk, so I won't delay you any further. You may take the screen now. Yes, that's great. Hi, welcome to my presentation. I hope you're all doing well today. I'm going to talk about how to provide value to the community through YouTube marketing. But before we start, let me just quickly introduce myself. My name is Rhea Aldecente, and I wear a lot of different hats. To start with, I'm a digital content manager working mainly with Multiply Me. It is a BPO company that offers remote job opportunities to Filipinos. I also serve as their brand ambassador for their Filipino-facing audience. I'm also a YouTube content strategist, and I help purpose-driven entrepreneurs um, educators, trainers, instructors, or basically anyone who wants to teach on YouTube, build their authority and monetize their expertise. On the side, I also do BPO training consulting, and I can say that I'm an entrepreneur because a lot of my projects are heavily based on providing education, value, uh, training, as well as instructional materials to my audience. And to top these all off, I'm also a wife and a mom to one kid. I'd like to show you my main channel, which is Raya Ninja. This is uh, where I share free videos on how to get hired and thrive in the BPO industry. I publish videos every week. When I crossed the 100K subscriber mark, I created a new channel which documents my experiences as an 
entrepreneur or becoming an entrepreneur, as well as to provide valuable tips to entrepreneurs on how to, again, build their authority and monetize their expertise. So talking about YouTube marketing, if you're not familiar with it yet, uh, let me touch on this a little bit. It is using YouTube as a platform or a channel to build your brand's authority and credibility and make it visible to your ideal audience. Obviously, there are a lot of different types of marketing, and I've also tried a lot of them, such as social media marketing and marketing through my website. But through the years, I've found a really great success on YouTube or video marketing. Now, this is not necessarily just for your brand. Of course, you can market through YouTube uh, while you're working with different clients or you're working for a company or for different businesses. Now, why is YouTube perfect for marketing? First, it is the second largest search engine and it is owned by the largest search engine, which is Google. And uh, what does this mean? This means that you can employ uh, tested and proven techniques and strategies for you to get seen online, um, not just on YouTube, but also on Google search engine because it also shows um, video search results, right? Aside from that, it will be easier for you to get your videos and your content recommended because of the YouTube algorithm. So if you create really good content, then it's a good boost for your traffic and it can really be an advantage for you to uh, get your brand out there. Second is that it is sustainable. To me, it's really sustainable as long as you create searchable and evergreen content. And what I mean by this is that you're not just creating content to be trending for one day, two days, for a week, a month, or a few years, but you're actually creating content for the long term. And when it's evergreen, that means it's still going to be relevant a few years down the road. For example, in my case, I always share videos about interview tips, how to ace your interviews. And these things are still applicable even after a few years from now. So if people will search for those, type, uh, those topics on YouTube or on Google, it will still show on the search results. And that's how I can say that it is sustainable because even though you're not updating that video anymore or you're not doing anything anymore, you can still, you know, or your video can still do the work for you. An example would be one of my videos about interview questions and answers. It is a two-year-old video, and it is still my top performing and top earning video up until today. And I haven't really touched it in the past two years. It's just that I optimized it for search when I started creating that video. So it does the marketing for me. The third reason that YouTube is perfect for marketing is that you can expand your audience reach. So even though initially you just thought of creating content for your local audience, that might change in the future. You may want to internationalize because you want to reach a wider audience, which was also what happened to me. At first, I wanted to just reach people in Cebu, but then I said, why not reach the entire Philippines? And then I said, my content is relevant all around the world. So why not um, try to reach people uh, outside the Philippines as well, which was such a great idea because when that happened, I started speaking in English on my channel, which helped me reach more people, and which also helped me gain more projects and opportunities, so more income generating activities for me as well. And number four, and this is the best part, it's actually free. I know that a lot of social media networks are also free, but with YouTube, come to think of it, you just need to publish a video and you don't have to pay for anything. And that's already free advertising for you as long as you have the right content strategy. Aside from that, you're also already given the support as well as a free um, YouTube analytics where and you can track your progress. You can see which videos worked and which ones did not. You can adjust based on what you see in your analytics. You can also see uh, your engagement and your ad revenue 
uh, how else can you improve your channel and everything that you need to know about your channel. And lastly, it is more personal. It is not all the time that you get to share a personal space with your viewers or your online community. And I say this because you're making a video, you're putting yourself out there for everyone to see. Your face is there. That is your brand. And once people see that, they will start establishing what we call the no like trust with you. And that's mainly because they can see you on screen. And for a lot of people, even though they haven't met you in person, it will most likely feel like they've already known you a long time ago. Uh, obviously, when people start searching for things online, let's just say on YouTube, they will begin to know you because let's say your videos are recommended on YouTube or um, they've seen it being shared by their friends or their family members, but they won't really like or trust you right away. And that's what you have to work on so that you'll be able to create that online community that you like. Now, when you start creating searchable content and make it valuable, a lot of people might say, oh, okay, um, I can relate to this person. I like her personality. I like how she talks and her content is really useful. Then they begin to like you, right? And after that, they will start to trust you and subscribe to your channel. They will become your loyal followers and part of your online community because you are showing up for them and you are creating valuable or high quality content. And that's when they start to recommend your channel to their friends, their family members, who can be your potential customers or clients in the future. Now, the question is, how do you establish no like trust? And how is this related to providing value to the community? That's the next thing that we're going to talk about. How do you provide value to the community through YouTube marketing? The first thing is to share your knowledge and expertise. Even though you're not a high-level expert, that you're not really 100% confident yet of your knowledge or your skills, it is okay. As long as you have something to share and you know that it is something that can help a group of people, it does not even have to be a large group of people. Let's just say people you know, you can already start creating content or market that content on YouTube and start establishing yourself as an expert. And remember, nobody started as an expert. Everyone will really start somewhere. And that somewhere is you know, the beginning of building your authority or your credibility for your audience to know, like, and trust you. And even though, let's just say, you're only documenting your experiences from the very first time you tried something up until you perfected something, it is already a huge chance for you to put yourself out there and build your authority and provide value to the group of people that can actually gain something from what you're sharing. The second thing is to find what you're good at and stick to it. And this might sound controversial to some because a lot of you for sure are multi-passionate, multi-talented individuals who have a lot of talents and skills, abilities, and for sure you, you want to do a lot of things in your lifetime. But the thing is that for you to be able to provide value to your community and lock in that online community, you also need to start with what you're good at and then stick to it for at least a couple of months or years. And that's because you don't want to confuse your audience about who you are or what you're trying to offer. In the future, if you have more projects in mind, then you can definitely pursue those projects. I'm not saying that you cannot try new things. That's obviously a very nice way to discover something else as entrepreneurs. But in the beginning, you might want to focus on something that you believe you are truly good at. If you try to chase a lot of different things, a lot of different projects, then your focus will be divided and you end up doing mediocre projects instead of that one great thing that you can offer to your online community. Obviously, you can still provide value even though you are... I'm talking about a lot of different things. 
But again, if you want to really nail down your um, your authority or uh, the community that you want to create, you want to market on YouTube, you have to start with a niche or a field that you're good at. Number three is to create high quality value based content. And when we say high quality, this does not mean high end production quality with expensive cameras, lighting, and studio setup, because you may have all of those expensive things, but if your content is not truly giving value to your audience or community, it does not tell them how to do something, it does not inspire, motivate, or entertain them, then you will not be able to attract your ideal audience. You will only get comments like, I like your background, your camera I believe is so nice because you look so crisp on video. Those are the comments that you will get, which are nice, but then you want to really listen to the feedback about your content and what you're teaching. And when people say that what you said in video really helped me, and that is a win-win. So focus on creating good quality content first. Okay, That means the, the meat of your content is really what you're teaching or what you're talking about on video. Number four is show up consistently for your community. This is one of the things that really needs commitment. When I started creating my YouTube channel, uh, I told myself I'm going to publish one video every week for the whole year. That was in 2018. And I did just that. I did not skip a week, even though I was feeling a bit lazy or tired. It takes a really like high level of commitment to be able to market on YouTube and provide value to, their, to your community on a consistent manner. And not only this, it does not only mean showing up every week to provide them value on video, but it's also about engaging with your online community and initiating conversations, healthy conversations. As someone who creates video online, if it is something related to your field or your niche, then be the first person to talk about it. Ask your community what they think about it. Ask your opinion or their insights. And if it sparks conversation, then that's good. And at least you are talking about it and you are also uh, providing awareness to the online community and even outside the community or people who are not directly um, following your channel. And by doing so, you're already providing value because you're talking about an important topic or an important issue related to your niche. And number five is to develop and offer products and or services that are truly beneficial to your community. Eventually, uh, when you have built your channel or your online platform. Um, you've been marketing on YouTube. You've established no like trust with your audience. You will most likely think of offering a paid product, service, or offer. And you might be met with resistance from some people who are expecting you to provide everything for free. But then you can counter that by making sure that you're offering products services that are really valuable to your audience, that they can really say that this is something I will pay for because I know that this can help me. So it's not going to be hard for you to offer those services because those are related to what you are already talking about on YouTube or what you're already marketing on YouTube. So there, that's basically everything that I can share with you for now about how to provide value to the community through YouTube marketing. If you want to know more about uh, YouTube content strategy and how to grow your YouTube channel and how to be an entrepreneur, how to start creating content that provides value, you can connect with me. These are my social media channels. My main channel is Raya Ninja, but you can find more YouTube-related content on my new channel, which is Raya Jean. Or if you have any questions, you can email me at rayajean.biz at gmail.com. That's it for today, and I hope you learned something. Stay safe. 
Thank you so much, Rhea, for your talk about providing value to the community through YouTube marketing. So to all inspiring YouTube content creators out there, I hope you were taking down notes, Jud. So thank you so much for the insightful talk, Rhea. And You're see you welcome. later with the thank sofa you. chat. And, and yeah, last but not definitely not the least, we have Vernon Joseph Go, who will be talking about personal financial tips for youth. Of course, as youth, we need to pay attention to finances. Hello, Vernon. How are you doing? I am good. So nice to see you. So yeah, I am excited to listen to your talk. So I'll let you take it away. Sure. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Vernon Joseph uh, Go. I uh, just just share something about myself. I, I started my like... Uh, financial learning journey when I was already working. So as, as I'm sure um, all of us know that uh, we were not really taught uh, about personal finance uh, as to the, the details of it or how we're going to go about it. At least during my time, um, there was nothing, right? Many of us are, or many of you, are probably just uh, starting your uh, adult life, or even if you're already in the middle of your adult life, uh, this guide that I made will definitely be useful for how to get good with money, or at least you know, have like an overview of it, because um, it's really difficult, or it's it's, it's impossible to to condense everything. Um, in, in one sitting or in 30 minutes or so. So there's also that. But I've, I've made sure that uh, to give you a, a comprehensive overview of uh, it, basically a rough order that, 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 that can guide you as to what you should be doing. So without further ado, here we go. What is it all about? Uh, personal finance is the art and science uh, of the application of finance principles to a person or a unit. This image that I shared here uh, is the image of the heart and the mind. I think this is the, a very good visual representation of personal finance because it's a constant battle between your brain and your heart. Um, on one hand, you want you no, know, you have your desires. You have your wants. You want you want that milk tea. You want that, you know that that uh, very expensive plant <laughs> for some reason. But then your brain tries to rein yourself in, and it's a constant back and forth. Our likes and wants, needs, it varies at, at different ages of our life or different stages of our life. So if you're single, your priorities are different. If you're married, your priorities are different. And if you're approaching retirement, once again, your priorities will shift. So the first step, step number one, self-awareness. Okay, Self-awareness is very important because this is what keeps us going or this is what gives us direction. Um, so let me throw this question. If knowledge is power, what is more powerful than knowledge? Let's pause there. Let, let you think, let that question sink in. Um, but the answer, the answer at least that I chose is habits are more powerful than knowledge. Why? Uh, an example. Let's say a, a health example. Uh, cigarette smoking, right? Cigarette smoking is dangerous to your health. We all know this. We all know that cigarette smoking is bad. There's a government warning. Cigarette smoking is dangerous for, for your health. And yet, and yet. These people who know, they know that cigarette smoking is bad, they still, they still keep smoking. Now, they, they may have different reasons for smoking. It could be peer pressure. It could be prestige. It could be something else, right? But at the end of the day, this is a good example of you have the knowledge, but you're not applying the knowledge, right? Your knowledge is being overwritten by your habits and in this case it's a bad habit right and if you're not self-aware of these kinds of all the financial concepts 
investment concepts, insurance concepts, and so on and so forth, banking concepts, accounting concepts. If when the time comes you want, you, you want or you need to apply it, or be able to consistently execute on it, then there's something wrong. You need to look inwards instead of outwards. You need to look at yourself. You need to ask yourself those questions, those hard questions. What, what is it that is hindering me from pursuing the financial life that I desire? Right? Self-awareness. It's quite deep, but it's, it's going to make sense. Uh, number two, it starts with a budget. Everything starts with a budget. You know, a budget is a spending plan. It can also be a savings plan. What a budget is, is actually it's a financial plan, a very, very basic financial plan. And a budget allows you to see your cash inflow and your cash outflow. And, it, and if you're honest with yourself, like this relates to number one, if you're honest with yourself, uh, you will have the opportunity to analyze everything. And you're also like getting to know yourself again because financially you you will be in constant battle with yourself. You will you will look at wh why did I spend this much for Shopee, for Lazada, 10, 10, 11, 11, 9, 9, all those uh, sales, uh, all those sales, all those promos. Why do I keep on spending things that I do not necessarily need, right? So that, it starts with budget. Um, quick rules for budgeting. You know, rule number one, don't lose money. Rule number two, don't forget rule number one. So that is from uh, Warren Buffett. Now, this is his rules for investing, but it, it's also uh, applicable to uh, personal finance, also applicable to, to budgeting. A budget will give you that uh, big picture view of, of your net worth, right? how much you earn, how many assets you have. The, the budget allows us to document your starting point, right? How can you proceed to the next level? How can you go to point A to point B if you don't know your current situation? So the budget gives you that uh, opportunity to see the distance between you and your goal, which leads us to the next step. Huh? No, number three, identify your goals. So different people will have different goals. Uh, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, different stages of your life, you will have different goals. So whatever those goals may be, uh, you, whether if it's a dream car, pet, uh, wedding, your dream wedding, uh, property, whether if it's house and lot or condominium, or if you want to be a plantito or plantita, start a small farm, a garden, or you, if you just want to travel the world, you, know, you start identifying your goals. Now, the goal setting, you know, it's, it's quite scary, but if you want to pursue the life that you want, then you have to set your goals. This will give you a rough picture of how you want to live. So how do you consolidate your goals and your budget? So the, the trick here is you, add, you, you quantify, you, you quantify your goals. So if you want, if you want a car, what type of car, right? Uh, is it an expensive car? Is it an SUV? How much does it cost? So once you know how much it costs, then you know how much you, you need to make, right? If it's, if, if it's an SUV, you want 1.5 to 2, 2 million, and then, okay, how much do I need? to save in order to reach this amount, right? So now, if you quantify your goals, it becomes closer to reality. Number four, get a financial buddy, AKA accountability partner. And it always helps to have a sort of cheerleader, right? Uh, someone to vent to, someone to talk about money to. Because in our culture, we are not, necessarily open to talk about money, right? Uh, money is one of the taboo topics in, in our society, right? There's religion, politics, money, and sex. So money is the top four things that's uh, it's quite uh, difficult to talk about with your family. 
Now, if your family is open with this, then good for you. Uh, if not, then consider having an accountability partner. Number five, set aside funds for emergencies. Basically, emergency fund. Uh, people tend to underestimate savings, but most of the time, uh, your savings will save you. Typically, the emergency fund can be set aside to mitigate job loss or income loss. So the, the, the advisable range is if you have set aside money for at least three to six months of your income, or instead, it can also be three to six months of your monthly uh, expenses. Basically, the money that allows you to survive until you find your next job or your next uh, replacement income uh, stream. And then you can also set aside money for car repairs or home repairs and of course, medical emergencies. Number six, get financially educated. As I mentioned earlier, uh, personal finance is uh, application of financial concepts to a person or unit. And these financial concepts, this is it. Uh, there, there's a lot, right? So employment, salary, budget, insurance, mortgage, credit, deposit, investment, retirement, tax advantage, social security, savings, debt. And that's not even everything. Right? If you are taking notes, please do take notes. Uh, you can research or learn more about these individual concepts uh, you know, as an assignment for later. Right. And in the second image, you have there the overview of the Philippine financial system. So just to show you the financial institutions that uh, regulate certain financial industries. So for bank and other uh, financial institutions, you have Banco Central ng Pilipinas. And then for, uh, for lending, so I'm going to get closer. Lending companies, investment houses, financial corporation, capital markets, insurance operative you have the sec ic and cda for that just to give you like a gist of how vast the the financial industry is so typically when when we talk about finance we always end up talking about investment so here we will this let's describe what investment is people don't know what investment means. We use it, like we, we tend to use words that we necessarily don't, don't understand, right? We don't know what it is. We just claim to know what it is. So for me, the definition I subscribe to is an investment operation is one which upon thorough analysis promises safety of principal and satisfactory return. So this was taken from a book, Security Analysis, in 1934 by Benjamin Graham and David Dodd. So Benjamin Graham is the mentor of Warren Buffett. So safety of principle, that's the key word, and a satisfactory return, right? If it's other than that, it's probably fraud or a scam, right? Outrageous returns. And, and this is uh, an unpleasant truth, like people cannot accept it. They, they think that investments should be should be like a very, very big return all the time. No, it's not consistent because it's th there's this thing called market factors, right? Market factors, there's supply, there's demand. So with that, it means there's no such, a, there's no such thing as guaranteed investment. Right? If, some, if somebody comes to you and says, hey, your investment is guaranteed. No. No, this year is the best example for no such thing as guarantees, right? So we have a health crisis, global health crisis. So for sure, you know, the, the, the people forecasting last year, they would have been very optimistic and said, hey, 2020 is the best year for investment. And then, you know, something happened, pandemic happened. And a lot of investments were were not uh, were not successful, basically, right? Another guy is investment is most intelligent when it is most business-like. So let's have an example here. Example I can think of is um, 
uh, ag there, there's uh, agribusiness, right? Agribusiness is it's very it's a legit type of business. Uh, let's say you're buying and selling pigs or you're buying and selling poultry, right? Some some people uh, fraudulent scammers, scammers in general, will approach you and say, "Come invest with me. Your investment is guaranteed." This is the, the formula, right? This is the methodology. The methodology is sound, right? You buy a pig, you grow the pig. The pig gets uh, gets fat. It weighs. It becomes heavier. The heavier it is, the more it costs. You sell it. The margin. Uh, there's a margin of profit. That's your profit. That's that's how you. That's how basically buying and selling pigs work. But if they say that. Yeah, you know, our investment. If you invest with me, it's one hundred percent return all the time. That's that that becomes tricky. That becomes questionable because how can you guarantee one hundred percent return all the time without accounting for a margin of error? Even scientists account for margin of error. So, are you saying your pigs are immortal? The pig could get sick, or it could die. Right? If the pig gets sick, it will be thinner. Therefore, you cannot sell it for the same amount that you wish to sell it. So you you either reduce your margin of profit, or you may take losses. So when somebody says, "Hey, all the time, I will guarantee this fixed amount," no, that's that's, that's impossible, basically. Right? So we, which this this leads us to uh, something I want to share about uh, you know scams and, and uh, fraudulent schemes like even if we are in a health crisis this year there are still lots of scammers who are trying to take advantage of, of our situation right and just to share with you uh, RA Republic Act 8799 Securities Regulation Code states that no person shall engage in buying and selling of securities unless they are registered with the SEC. I, I specified here secondary license because let's say if you, you want to, to start a business, you need license to operate. That's the registration for SEC and for DTI. But the secondary license part is, that's another thing. That's for buying and selling investment. So those who do these kinds of things may be criminally criminally liable the maximum fine of 5 million pesos or imprisonment of up to 21 years or both. And then number seven is health is wealth. So this is just like a reminder for everyone. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Health is very important, especially this year. Um, but same thing as I mentioned in the step number one. Um, it's not enough to have the knowledge, right? Every one of us knows that you know exercise, uh, proper and balanced diet is very important. And yet, some of us are are still. Uh, far behind in, in, do, in applying those particular knowledge. So you cannot just read about push-ups. You need to actually do the push-ups. Number eight, create financial strategy or an action plan. So now you know, your, now you see your, the big picture of, of your cash inflow, cash outflow. Then you can strategize. How, 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 are, how are we gonna proceed from here? Just like a business. If you're a business owner, you know the situation, the financial situation, you have a goal that you want to go to, should you decide to expand your business? Or should you decide to maintain the business, keep it business as usual, and then maybe start a new business? So these are the things uh, that we need to consider or, or think about, right? Now, if, you, if you're not a business owner, you can, can, you can plan plan out if you want a promotion, okay, based on your 
budget, based on your network, based on your cash inflow, outflow, you, you feel that you want to shorten the time that you wish to achieve the goals. And one of the ways to do that is to increase your income. So how do you increase your income? One way is to seek promotion or you strategize so that you will get promotion so that you will get an increase in your salary. Or you can do a side hustles. You can do part-times, you can do sidelines because in, in the 24 hours we have each day eight hours. Let's say eight hours is used for sleep, eight hours is used for work, for your full-time job, and you still have remaining eight hours for you to divide for uh, entertainment, leisure, social life, family life, or sideline. You decide, you strategize, create an action plan and execute it. Next, okay, you, you execute and apply your knowledge, okay? So, as we mentioned earlier, so many concepts in personal finance, now is the time for you to apply those things get insurance get your health insurance get your life insurance get, get your group family insurance insure your non-life prop uh, own uh, assets or properties and uh, get your income protected so the goal of uh, of insurance is, is protection or financial disaster preparedness and i think it has become you know it people have become aware of, of insurance uh, Due to, due to the pandemic. Of course, investment. So now, why do, do I say that you need to get financially educated first before investing? It's because, uh, how do I say this? If you engage into, into something that you have no idea about, you're basically just gambling your money away, right? You don't want to gamble. You, your hard-earned money. So. You study it, you study your particular investment, and then you stick to it. You start start small. Start with one investment. Don't don't directly don't, don't directly have multiple investments, although they say you know you have to diversify. But my take is you, you start with one, you stabilize it before you, you move to the next. Okay. So how or where do you invest? That's that's one of the very important questions that you guys may be thinking. So you invest in government. Why? Why invest in government? No, government can can provide you one of the safest uh, investment instruments out there. Treasury bills, uh, retail, treasury bonds, but those require specialists to to buy and sell. So if you're just if you're not a uh, bond seller or a broker what do you do well there's lots of programs or or, or laws that you can take advantage of in the government investment instruments provided by government agencies such as sss and Pag ebay so sss have a peso fund it's a tax-free uh, investment instrument uh, same with the uh, Pag ebay mp2 which is a high yield uh, savings account and then you have the para law, a personal equity retirement account. Basically, it provides you with a tax-free investment income, you know, from final from final withholding tax, capital gains tax, and income tax. So it's tax-free, right? Government, uh, of course, stock market. You study the stock market, trading, value investing, business for business. You can reach out to DTI, so they have the BMBE law. Uh, which is the, what do you call this again? A barangay micro business enterprise, which basically it's a, it's a program wherein you can get, you can possibly have a potential micro business tax exemption for two years, I think. So more on that with, with DTI, you can reach out to DTI. And then lastly, you should invest in yourself. Don't forget about yourself. Uh, one of the things that you should invest on is our, our skills, in the highly in-demand skills, or you can start with sales. Sales is very important because you will probably be engaged in sales your whole life. First thing you do after you graduate college, you sell yourself. Resume, interviews. If you want to start a business, you will still be engaged in selling. If you want to engage in investment, you will still be engaged in selling. But in, especially in the stock market, you buy and sell 
publicly registered companies. Right? So selling is uh, something you should think about. And why should you invest? Well, you can be young without money, but you can't be old without it. So, okay, number 10, consider go try and optimize, automate, and drive. So basically, I uh, highly encourage you to automate your uh, investments, your savings, so that it'd be easier for you to focus on, on, on things, on your work, on your family. Don't let uh, money rule your life, basically. Take advantage of technology, apps, telemedicine, consider that. Number 11, so don't forget to pause uh, for money mental health. Uh, have money check-ins with, with your buddies, um, your financial buddy. Celebrate small success. Don't forget to celebrate small success. Uh, accept our current money culture. Uh, the more you learn, actually, the more you will encounter the, the bad money culture that we have. Um, for example, the taboo money talk with your family. Uh, another is turning your children into retirement funds. It's another one. So you 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 will find yourself. You'll probably, if you're lucky, you won't find yourself in this particular situation if your your family is open with, with money and uh, finance. But if they are not, then you will sooner or later have to confront them. You may need to talk to them about their finances for their own good. And this is the part where you share your knowledge and maybe a little bit of your blessings uh, to them. And of course, uh, as I've mentioned earlier, do not be carried away with the pursuit of money. Remember why you're you're doing this remember why you're saving you're investing it is to achieve your your identified financial goal um and ultimately you you should also remember your happiness right at the end of the day whatever we are pursuing it is the pursuit of our own happiness whatever it may be so understanding how money works is the, is the first step towards living the life you want to live. Number twelve, the last one. So don't don't be don't be afraid to ask for help, right? As 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 you can see that as a guy that's multitasking, we already have we already have uh, so much going on in our life. Right? We have family, we have our career, uh, we have our social life. And then uh, all the other things but that's got also going on in the world. And then you, you add all these things. Uh, <laughs> you need to learn all these things about personal finance, about investment, about insurance, about so real estate, about so on and so forth. So at some point, you, you should consider like asking for help. Right? Who do you ask for help? To the specialist. Uh, RFPs or registered financial planners such as myself. Um, we can help you plan a holistic view of your financial life. We're not going to sell you products, okay? Just like a doctor, you know, when you're sick, you look for a doctor, you ask for a consult for a doctor, and the doctor will do their diagnosis, and then they're going to give you some recommendations, and you pay the doctor's fee. And then the doctor will recommend some products, and then you get the, the, the receipt now, and then you, you go to the pharmacist, right? You do not go directly to your pharmacist to ask for recommendations for the situation because of course they will be, they will be biased, right? So that's one. Number, next one would be uh, accountants. If you run a business, uh, accountants are very useful. If you don't run a business, accountants are still useful for, uh, to manage or to make you understand uh, your taxes, your tax liabilities. And then next will be, of course, lawyers and then other specialists in the field. Um, because personal finance is so, so many inter, inter, interacting or uh, fields that you need to interact with. So there's health aspect, there's nutrition, there's fitness, 
real estate. So don't be afraid to ask for their help. Yep, and, and that's it. Right? If you have any questions, feel free to send it to me. I'll send it to my blog. And you can see there my blog links, my social links. If your question is very detailed, uh, let me know. I, I, I'll be very uh, happy to, to answer them for you. And uh, I hope that you guys learned something new. And um, of course, uh, stay safe. What an amazing talk that was, Vernon. I really learned a lot. A lot. Like, thank you so much for that. Ang dami ko natutunan about personal finance, like, you know, emergency fund. Now, we just realized during this pandemic that is very, very important. So, yes. you know, so far, this afternoon really has been very super educational and awe-inspiring. So, let's keep it all in our jar of learnings. Thank you so much, Vernon. And um, now, see you later in the sofa chat. Now, let's all bring back our speakers for our sofa chat where we will try to get candid with our speakers and, of course, try to squeeze more tricks of the trade from them. So, let's start off with Paula. Hi, Paula. She talked about personal branding for, for the youth. Now, let's go to, uh, let's call on Rhea. Yeah, she Hi. talked about YouTube marketing and putting content and value out there. And we have David. Yes, the five must for online businesses. And lastly, and but not the least, we have Vernon talked about financial, um, personal financial planning or finances for youth. So now is our chance to ask them about their talks earlier. So if you guys have their questions, drop them in the live chat and we'll choose questions. We can discuss with them. So, okay, how are you guys doing? Awesome. Okay lang. Yeah. Very, very nice. Good. So I, we really, really learned a lot. I really watched all your videos and I am like, you know, picking a lot of good things from that and i'm trying to you know establish it like as one of the youth all the learnings that i learned from you like from personal branding up until the finances up until you know showing out there like your uniqueness like as a content creator and you know trying to get that attention from the audience so let's all get started with the questions um I'll get started with the questions i have initially compiled and the first one goes to miss Rhea. Okay. So, yeah, the question is, we agree that the key factor to YouTube marketing is really value-based content, as you mentioned in your video. However, mm -hmm. decent chats like, and video quality also plays like, a very important role or a great low per role, per se, in, 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 in considering that the platform is YouTube, right? Because, you know, it's visual, mm -hmm. it's video-based. It's a video-based platform. With, with that, like, what advice can you give to aspirants in terms of low-cost video production and editing? Yeah. Thanks for that wonderful question. I think I get that question a lot as well from beginners. And I'd say that uh, you don't have to have expensive camera, gadgets, and equipment, or even um, a fancy lighting or setup. You can definitely start with your smartphone. As we all know, smartphones are already high-end nowadays. But even I, when I started, I just used my mid-range phone. And it created better quality videos than I expected. And one thing that I want to highlight as well is more than the, I guess, the video quality is the audio quality because yeah. people can just, even though it's video, people can just listen to you. But if your audio is not that good, then they will definitely drop from your video. Uh, aside from that, you also have to first think of content value before production value, at least when you're starting, because uh, most people will really look for what they can learn or what they can get from your video, rather than like, oh, you have a very crisp video, you have very nice lighting or setup. So smartphone and then natural lighting will do, that's like the lowest production cost. And I've done that in like two years up until I had uh, about 50K subscribers. And that's the only time I invested in a camera and additional lighting setup. Yeah. yeah, that was very insightful. So you guys were learning now, you know, it's very important to have content first, like really put value into your um, 
and to your audience to your audiences and then it will follow like you can invest na in, in, in camera you can get started like lean just your smartphones of course the smartphones now have good cameras cameras already and the qualities are okay it's just that the content is very much important so yeah just good lighting probably a natural light siguro na yeah, yeah. thank you so much Rhea. now let's go to david hi david hey yeah. So in connection to what you shared to us earlier, like the fast pace, I really adored that video. Um, oh, yeah. said that it's important to be everywhere as a business for people to see you easily. So as a budding entrepreneur, I'm sure this is also a question asked by people there or by, by our audiences. Like as a budding entrepreneur, I only have one manpower to handle my channels, like the social media platforms that I have, yeah. the ordering, the inventory, and so on and so forth, like, you know, responding to these people and their inquiries. Um, and that manpower is just me, like me, yeah. a budding entrepreneur. Do you still recommend to enlist myself in all of the platforms? So if not, like, where should I get started? Or do how do I go about that? Well, your goal is to be as visible as possible, but then it's also... Do it at your own pace, right? So do what yeah. you can with what you have. Uh, I think the easiest thing to start with is probably Facebook. It has the biggest population with Filipino um, internet users. And the thing about Facebook is it's a boosting game. Like Facebook yeah. is, at the end of the day, a corporation, right? And they're trying to make money, so they want you to advertise on their platform. And so if you make one thing on Facebook and you boost it, you can extend the use of that piece of content and yeah. by boosting guys we mean paying for ads like if you guys are unfamiliar with it uh facebook's easiest facebook really is the easiest and especially because yeah. they have marketplace i don't know about the rest of you but honestly when i was when this quarantine started i bought almost everything off marketplace because i was waiting so long for lazada and all the other online stores to bring things into cebu and like there was that period of the lockdown where like nothing was coming in and it's like well, if I can't leave my house, where am I going to get stuff, right? And so a lot of random things you will find on Facebook Marketplace. And not just plants. Like, you'll find tools. You'll find, like, services. Yeah. Um, and you can boost your post on Facebook, which helps you reach more people, too. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. That's very nice advice. Thank you so much, David. Yeah, so guys, um, we're learning. We can get started with Facebook Marketplace. Marketplace. Also, the interface is very quite easy to navigate, right? So for a person who is just starting out, like you can post out there and then just boost your post probably or start a page rather. So yeah, Facebook page is also good. Thank you so much, David. Um, now let's go to Paula. Hi. Hi. So the question coming from the crowd is, as an advocate for like personal branding, parang pang Miss Universe, no? But yeah, as an advocate for personal branding and women in the digital space, like very empowering, what is your take with self-promotion in relations to personal branding? Yeah, that's a great question, Aji. Thanks for bringing that up. Well, real self-promotion personally extends beyond the initial payoff. We were discussing it offline earlier about the Kardashians and the Hiltons doing this self-promotion. No, that is not us. Uh, basically, real self-promotion even bypasses the payoff entirely. It, uh, genuine, purposeful self-promotion gives people a reason to associate themselves with you and your brand for the long term. It, uh, it should be genuine and authentic, and it's more like you're making friends rather than selling something. So that, yeah. that for me, is the self-promotion that has sustainability. Yeah, okay. That's very, like, you know, parang, okay, tumago sa puso kind of answer so thank you so much Ms. Paula like you know you, you need to like establish also your grounds like it's not just the motivation is you trying to post yourself out there or trying to promote yourself out there or not just you know like all the underlying things that you can sell out there yeah. so yeah thank you so much um Paula for that now I also have a question for Vernon yeah a lot of my friends a lot of friends my age I am young, youth, says that stocks are inv and in are investments and investments are gamble. So you don't put money you're not willing to lose, right? 
what's your take on it or to what extent does that hold true um so uh, um, as i mentioned earlier uh rule number one don't lose money you know? mm -hmm. so I, I will agree with uh as much as possible you should not like you should reduce the the, the opportunities that you put yourself into losing yeah. money taking money out of your pocket mm -hmm. um for for the gambling part um if you do not know what you're getting yourself into you're, you're just you're just basically gambling you're you're yeah you're setting yourself up to to lose money so why would you put yourself in that position if you work hard for your money diba? Mm -mm. so for anyway if you want to to still invest in in stocks um there are many ways to to reduce the risk you know and one way to reduce the risk is to to know what you're getting yourself into so to, to understand yeah. um those things so for stocks there are many options so I, I yeah make, make this like a bullet point um if you if you work for a company that's publicly listed in the stock market mm -hmm. and if they offer stock options then technically you're investing in the stock market it's just that mm -hmm. it's just for one company and you're not diversified but that's a start right? yeah another if you want to be diversified then you can go for pooled funds so these are fun funds or like different stocks that are pulled into a to a, to a fund um, it's it's like a group investing but there's one person mm -hmm. who's managing it so that's what you call the mutual funds the uitf uh, yeah. under banks and the etf the exchange traded funds so if you, if you don't want to learn the nitty-gritty then you can just invest in in, in mutual funds uh, that follow the index right and then yeah there are many other options as i mentioned uh pera pera the personal equity retirement account mm -hmm. it is attached to a bank which also invests that into an equity fund which is mm -hmm. invested in the stock market but it's tax it's tax, it has lots of tax benefits or tax advantages yeah so that you can you can go for that so that's that that's the, the safety and then you have also tax tax benefits, so that, I think that's a good it's a good option. Okay, that was very insightful, guys. Um, if you don't want to lose your money, like you should know what you are getting into. Like that's a piece of advice I I am reminding myself. And also probably, siguro na, like if you if you are willing to invest, like set aside the money you're willing to lose because it's really like investing. It's the money that you are you know ready to lose if if that is. Um, for that matter. Thank you so much, Vernon. We also have like questions coming from the crowd. This is for Vernon and David. So um, what industry do you think will rise right after this pandemic? After? Yeah, after. <laughs> oh, tourism. Like we all want to get out, right? <laughs> <laughs> Positive thinking. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how many, you know, a lot of us have like used traveling to basically reset ourselves because everything's so fast paced now and you just need to get out of your environment to reset your mind, get inspired again. But this year I was like, oh, I guess we're not doing that. Um, <laughs> I think when things are safe again, I mean, we're starting to open up, right? But then yeah. like, you know, it's like, I personally am not comfortable enough to start traveling again. Like, I think I'm going to wait a while. But, like, I think that's the thing everybody's going to do. It's like, what's missing in our lives? Traveling. I miss the plane. I miss the sound of being in the plane. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Where people are more, like, extra careful right now, no, when they travel. But they definitely are missing travel. I, I could see, like, a lot of people already, like, going out. Especially, um, you know, travel for leisure is, like, okay, starting 21st of October. Yeah. Yeah. For Vernon, what can you say? Like, what are the industry do you think will rise right after this pandemic? Thank you so much, David. Uh, I think, I think, I think eventually, like, all industries will, will recover. But my, my take on it is, if you want, if you if the if the context of the question is, you want to know which industries will rise so that you can invest or put some money in in that particular information, yeah. um, then you can consider um, looking at industries that are already adapting or or thriving now. Yeah. Because once the pandemic is over, it's going to be like a different world already. Because 
a lot of changes are already happening uh, like today. Like for example, uh, for the tourism industry, I think uh, I'll just set an example outside the country. Uh, they are already like adapting um, um, different they're doing like virtual tours instead okay. like let's say for museums and 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 different uh, types of, of specific industry for eco tourism so they're they're providing um actually it's an opportunity for them to to market their place more so that once it's done people just want to to just go there and see it for themselves or experience it yeah for themselves yeah yeah yeah, hopefully, like that. That thus we call it like the new normal. Like people are trying to navigate this new normal. So we'll see right after this pandemic. But thank you so much, Vernon and David, for your answers. I hope you answered your question. Um, you know, whoever asked the question. Um, now we have for Miss Raya two questions actually. So I'm just gonna do it one by one. The first question is, how do we apply YouTube marketing in a fashion retail business? That's the first one. Okay, thanks for the question, Adji. Uh, uh, I think there are a lot of creative ways to do that. And one thing that I can think of is to show your journey when you were building your business. It's a fashion retail business uh, because people like storytelling and stories of people who have um, created their own business. And also, they like your viewers would resonate best with people who are showing their, let's say, struggles when they're creating their business and how they overcome uh, they, those struggles. Yeah. So behind, behind the scenes and everything, uh, aside from that, you can also have a creative campaign with, let's say you have a focus on something. For example, maybe your focus is uh, sustainable fashion or maybe for plus sized women, men and women, and then focus on that creative campaign. Use YouTube to uh, create a story for that campaign and then promote it from there. So it's all about thinking of the creative ways for you to highlight um, how your fashion retail business can give value back to the community without being too salesy or pushy yeah. because eventually your followers and your um, viewers will appreciate that and will definitely like consider you in the future will buy from you because of the story that you have yeah. offered to them yeah that's yeah I actually kind of agree, no? Because like a lot of the consumers now, although there are a lot of saturated contents out there, a lot mm. of consumers would like for I for myself, I'm speaking for myself, like like I would just not look at if you're selling a, a, a like a piece of clothes or like you know clothes or not. Like should am I resonating with a brand? Yeah. Like is the brand promise really like you know like what they're trying to stand for like the beliefs and the principle as a brand am i aligned to that like you know like supporting local am i aligned to supporting local so i'll purchase like, any local driven like you know products so yeah. like most likely what resonates to 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 the audience or what resonates to the customers as a brand thank you so much raya um, sure. I guess the questions are really ramping up for your case. Instead of two, we have three. So mm -hmm. let's go first with the second one, and I'll go back to you with the third. So second one is for YouTube marketing. May I ask what video editing app can you recommend for me as a beginner content creator? Uh, okay. If you are not editing on your laptop or desktop and you're just using your mobile phone, I highly recommend InShot for Android. You can check that out. It's in and then Shot because there are already built-in effects and music, and it's easy to, there are even filters, it's easy to edit. Um, I also used PowerDirector on mobile when I started. Um, I paid for yeah. it to remove the watermark. It's just around 300 plus, and you can get it uh, for a lifetime now. So that's one. And when you move to desktop, or your laptop um, until now i'm still using power director 16. i paid for it once and then i have it for the entire my entire lifetime basically uh and that is a yeah that is a cheaper alternative because um say uh, i think premiere is more expensive and if you're editing uh like uh training videos or educational videos and not necessarily travel videos with drone shots and all those transitions, then you can you can definitely use a simple editing app, which is yeah. either PowerDirector or InShot. Yeah, that's it. 
Okay, so take note, guys. I think like one of our moderators is also like putting that on chat, um, in chat and power director. So those are the the tools Rhea is recommending for us beginners for content creators. So I'll take note of that also. Watch out, guys. I'm gonna start my vlog joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> next is <laughs> subscribe vlogging. Okay, um, let's go to Paula. Um, this is for a personal branding question. Like, as you mentioned, personal branding involves finding your uniqueness and building reputations on the things. Like, if they saturated with a lot of ideas and content, how does someone come up with that uniqueness that doesn't have to be forced? What an interesting question, G. Um, uh, yeah. Basically, uh, finding your own uniqueness in a saturated market? That's a difficult question to answer. Uh, I think most of us are already trying to do that or trying to answer yeah. that for our own selves. Um, basically, I think it's really being consistent in your voice, in the way you're messaging yourself to the world. Uh, it's also being authentic. Because we all are unique individuals. So we all have something to offer the world. Now that is uniquely our own, uniquely our own voice. So in terms of content, you are your own content. But the thing is, can you keep it up consistently? That's the question. Mm -mm. So I think every single person who is a content creator is in that path now on being relevant, being substantial, and being able to, to connect with other people beyond the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I kind of agree. Like, similar to what how brands portray themselves no, or th their brands also. Like, what people, like, how, you, you know, like, backstage we were talking about how human you are and how human also resonates with what you are saying. So it's not just, you know, forcing that you are unique and you don't have any other content, like, no similar content out there. It's more of, like, there are factors affecting to you winning the game it's your consistency it's the quality of how you present out there no matter how many competitions you have with the same content because you really have something you can put on the table so yeah thank you so much um paula we have a question here again to Rhea. um this is like a short question but is it okay if i will use same name for my youtube channel and my fb page for my vlog yeah definitely use the same name <laughs> okay, it will for... help people remember you. It's for branding and consistency as well. Yes, key. So branding and consistency. That was short and simple. So Rhea recommends. Um, <laughs> next is, this is very funny. So I would let you guys answer whoever wants to answer. This is also a question coming from the crowd. Because everybody has a topic about going digital. Is there a place? Not really funny, but I think he is really like serious. I'd like to I'd like to correct myself. Not funny. Very interesting and very relevant. So I'm putting this out there. Is there a place for the funeral industry to go online? Given that the nature of the business is quite morbid. So the question mm -hmm. was asked by a funeral business. Apology, it was not funny. It was very nice relevant question yeah. relevant yeah. very valid question no because like yeah. you asked yourself well yeah, yeah how's the general business but can i answer that can i answer oh. that uh, yeah can i just answer with okay with with the pandemic that's happening everyone is not allowed to go out it's not it's prohibited so i think there is a market for that that kind of business because say people would example ako, i have family abroad and example something happens there i cannot just jump on a plane and go there, you know? So I would want to be able to see my family members who are also, I would like to join them in whatever they're, they're experiencing. So, so yes, there is a market for that. Mm -hmm. you, um, David? Well, even before the pandemic, um, there I forgot which funeral parlor um, offered it. I think it was St. Peter's. They have this thing called Iberol, where I, I know uh, as weird as it sounds, it's a St. webcam. Peter's, I think, yeah. with a basket. And yeah. so, like your relatives don't need to fly home to um, go to the to the wake or the funeral, and like um, I guess that's the any like, funeral parlor can apply it. Like, it just takes a Wi-Fi connection and the phone, and because we've been doing it for weddings, and like I guess you could yeah. apply the same thing for a wake and a funeral ceremonies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
And in terms of, let's say, YouTube marketing, you can definitely share stories about um, how you overcome your experience with that, right? So more on storytelling. Yeah. So I think there is a new potential no? for very none, yes. For me, I think it's it's very unfortunately look look it's a lucrative it's 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 a bit opportunistic opportunistic but uh, it's already happening. Um, I mean, yeah. at least for me, as uh, as I I've experienced like in the past months, um, I've I've attended like a like a wake like this. Uh, yeah. Like Online. This. And, um, yeah. Sometimes it, it takes a long time because the the one who's organizing it, it are the family themselves and 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 they're having a hard time like really uh, really just just moving moving the, the event along. I'm not saying that's a, that's a bad thing, but um, yeah. th- that's an opportunity because it's like most offline events are now online, like seven yeah. webinars, mm-hmm. yeah. and technically that's True. that's an event. But it's a it's it's a it's a life event, uh, a death event. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that can be like an offering uh, for for funeral parlors or or any related um, funeral business. And that's an option. Another option would be the cremation for yeah. for for them as well. And offering related uh, yeah. anything that can be replaced or replicated digitally. Of course, not all. I just you know there are a lot of potential though. Like I think all like all industries can fit to a certain space in digital space. You just have to find that certain you know platform of where you can do that. Yeah, thank you so much, guys. That was very interesting. Um, I'll go to Vernon again. Um, for this question, what do you think is the role of the youths? personal financial planning to the greater economic environment like you know the saving more or spending more like in a more granular effects like personally affects like the economic of the bigger things like like in what way uh it's a very economic economist uh, question economic uh, question yeah <laughs> and i'm not i you know disclaimer i'm not an economist um but um you, you have to look at it macro and micro uh, from a micro yeah. perspective um, you, need, you need to to put some money or cash flow into your pockets no whether mm-hmm. if you're uh, a worker or if you have a job or if you're an uh, entrepreneur right mm-hmm. either way um, cash is king right yeah uh, it, it's just the, the 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 process of getting that cash is different for a job you you work get employed yeah or uh, for the for a business, you need to ramp up your sales. Yeah, uh, and I, I think uh, we've we've experienced uh, the impact already this uh, this this lockdown period or quarantine period. Um, so I think the best answer would be to have a, a very uh, a, a balanced approach, or otherwise yeah. there will be disruption. And sometimes the disruption is is good, like e-commerce, for example. Um, and and uh, the digital collaborations uh, before, I think last year there were still some skeptics uh, saying, mm. uh, I don't know, we cannot do digital or we cannot do e-commerce. And then suddenly, when they are forced to do it, here we yeah. are. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I yeah. Be that. open to like all the <laughs> possibilities. Like also one just I got there was like you know, you you need to know which one like what what part of your earnings you you should save and you should like shop or spend. So yeah. Um, thank you so much, Renan. Let's go back to Rhea. Um, yeah. With the current trend of content creation, like a lot like TikToks, YouTube, like those kind of vlog. Hello, guys. Welcome to my vlog. I think this question is also a question from most of the people in the crowd. So is content creation deemed as profession now? Or if yes, what do you think? What do you think are other jobs that evolved in the digital space, being it is a platform for various content? Yeah, I believe it is definitely a profession. I even have that on my registration form for VIR mm-hmm. when I pay my taxes. So oh. yes, 
And a lot of the work that I do now are really in the content creation and marketing um, aspect. And people pay a lot for that, especially that uh, everything or almost everything is now online or digital. And when it comes to jobs related to online or digital professions, there are so many. Uh, you just have the creative industry, yeah. for example. You, you can have you can be a graphic designer even though you're not that you're not, even yeah. though you're not an expert yet because there are a lot of online courses that will teach you how to do just that and even the more corporate ones like uh, a manager or a healthcare professional legal counsel everything um, that you used to do in the office can also be done remotely so there are there's there's no shortage of work opportunities when it comes to digital or online yeah, yeah. Plus, this pandemic really highlighted yes. <laughs> that that opportunity. You know, like people going digital, like you can't go out. Like all of the transactions yeah. um goes from Zoom, from email, like all these things. So it was highlighted. Um, yeah. yeah. Thank you so much, Rhea. Okay. I just knew, like you know, content creator for Taxa. So like it's really like super super legit. So yeah, thank you for that. Um, I have one last question coming from the crowd for that's for David and. The last question is for everyone. For David, um, in this era of goldfish attention span for audiences, what are the key pieces of advice you can give to businesses to retain attention and later on encourage a purchase from the audience? Uh, well, don't be boring. <laughs> <laughs> Straightforward, yeah. Well, actually, so there's a thing, there's a technique a lot of YouTubers are using now. Um, a lot of content creators actually. So you at the start of your video, you promise what they'll see at the end. So a lot of times it's a tutorial, right? And like in a tutorial video, like you wanna see, you either show them what the end will look like so that they follow it all the way through. And I think tutorials really help if you're in a specific niche. So let's say you're selling makeup, then people yeah. wanna know how that makeup can be used. If you're selling um, some sort of food product that they can cook with, they wanna see how yeah. it, um, how they can apply it. So I think it's show them how to use your product, but like, because nobody wants an ad anymore, right? Nobody wants like, buy yeah. this, buy this, buy this. Like everyone kind of just wants like to be chill and they're like, okay, I'll try it out. Like, oh, that's yeah. nice. And I think it also helps when other people talk about you. Like you don't need to be talking about yourself all the time. Yeah. That's why, that's how influencer marketing comes in. So just find people in your niche, you know, don't find random people just because they have a big number and like, then you're like, how come I didn't sell anything? It's like, because their audience doesn't want your stuff. So find yeah. specific people whose audience will want to buy your things. Yeah, yeah, that's really a key, though. No? Like, for example, you're selling a pajama, and then the influencer, like the audiences of that influencer, is like not into pajama. So why would you wonder? Like, no one is buying from you yeah, because yeah. it was not the right fit. So like, looking for the right fit for like exactly. a brand ambassador. Yeah. Really, yeah. really makes sense. And one key thing is do not be boring. Okay, you guys? Yeah. Do not be boring. Okay. <laughs> so this one last question is for everyone. And um, a lot of people will expect this question. It's more of like, how does it feel to be successful at a young age? That's the cliche question. But let me reframe it to like a better way. Like, what fulfillment do you feel knowing that at this age, you are really making a difference? Let's start off with um, Rhea. Uh, at this point, I still feel like I have so much to do. Um, I know that at some point I have achieved a certain level of success, but then success is yeah. not like a one-off event in your life. It's something that happens like as you go along. So I'm just really happy that I'm able to use my platform to provide value to the community. And I'm going to continue doing that as long as I can. So, yeah. Thank you, Rhea. Um, let's go to Vernon. For me personally, like, uh, I don't really feel successful. It's more of like, it's a work in progress. It's a, yeah. it's a continuous thing. Um, don't, don't necessarily pursue success. Just pursue your happiness. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, at, the end of, at the end of the day, that's, that's what we are all doing. Right? And uh, go find and do things that you enjoy. And I, 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 the ideal is go do things that you enjoy while still getting compensated for it. So. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. For, mm -hmm. for, for fulfillment, um, 
I think if you, if you're able to, to to affect another person's life, I think that's that's I think that's my my fulfillment uh, so far. Uh, whether if it's through uh, through different types of, of like content, so my my contents inclined towards finance. So whether it's in written or audio or in visual, um, yeah. I, I get feedback and and I enjoy uh, interacting with with people who really like stop me in the street here in 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 in, the, in my town, wherein I don't really know them, but but they they stop me and say, oh, is is this you in the, in the newspaper? And then they they ask, yes, I, I wrote that, and then they, they 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 discuss like, oh, this is what I learned and this is what I realized, and I think that's uh, that's very fulfilling that I, I get to yeah. them without even knowing unless I get the feedback. Yeah, I think that's very important, you know, like, like receiving also feedback. Yeah, I think that's one key factor, like, as youth should remind ourselves, like, in this, like, age where we are, like, trying to grow and grow, like, because it's, like, really constant education and learning. Feedback is really important. So, yeah, thank you so much for that, Vernon. Let's go to Paula. Sure. Um. I think I would like to echo also Rhea and Vernon some statements on that. It's you don't really stop. It's like you, if you feel that you you're successful, hindi ka success talaga. Kasi you haven't. Well, personally, I don't feel that I have arrived in that platform yet. Um, it's also a work in progress. I am still trying to innovate marketing, uh, marketing myself, branding myself, promoting. I'm learning new skills. So I don't think that there should be a capping of success. Eh? Kasi it's a constant innovation of the self, constant growth. Yeah. Yan. So, yun. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. Paula, um, last but not least, let's go to David. Well, I'm Chinese, so nothing will ever be enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of people want to be successful but they don't define success for themselves. And so to some people, success might not be a monetary thing. And to other people, success is purely just a monetary thing. Because let's say they become the breadwinner of their family. To be able to feed their whole family is success to them, right? Um, I think you need to personally define what that means to you. And uh, you need to set goals for yourself and then celebrate those milestones when they happen. Like... Um, you know, the greatest thing about the internet is it's transformed the lives of so many people. Like, you can't, you don't even understand. You can't imagine how one person seemingly coming from nothing overnight, like, things just started coming to them and their lives, like, dramatically and drastically improved. So, like, I think you need to figure out what it means to you before you can start asking yourself, like, hey, Am I successful? Do I want to be successful? When will I be successful? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's very nice. Like that's that's a very like last like nice last answer. Like, you know, you need to know you need to define your own success before you like, you know, consider yourself. How does it look like and define that for yourself? Yeah, I think that's the end for our um, you know. Yep, Sashan, thank you so much. Paula, Rhea, Vernon, and David. I really, really yeah. enjoyed um, talking to you guys in the stage and at the backstage and a lot of things in the conversations we had. So I hope you keep in touch. Thank you so much, guys. That the, That's the end um, for the DTI Region 7's first installment of our Youth Entrepreneurship Program. Um, it's a webinar series, so of course we are holding our YAP webinar series to inspire all of our young entrepreneurs out there to start their journey to success by learning from the very best in the country. Thus, we invited those very insightful speakers that we have. So that was just a taste of all the other fun and informative webinars that DTI Region 7 has for us or like have for us or has prepared. I hope that everyone was able to learn something new this afternoon because I, for myself, really um, enjoyed like listening to their talks and, you know, learning a lot from them. And I hope you will be able to not just learn, but practice what we learned this afternoon. So I would like to extend uh, my biggest thanks to all of our speakers, Rhea, Paula, David, and Vernon for coming out this afternoon and for empowering our viewers, you, youth to start their entrepreneurship journey. So thank you so much for not only sharing your knowledge, 
but also your valuable time. And of course, maraming salamat po sa ating mga viewers out there na walang sawang tumatangkilik sa ating mga webinars. I hope you guys are really, really learning a lot. Kayo po ang nagbibigay inspiration sa amin na gumawa, na gumawa pa ng more informative webinars. Maraming, maraming, maraming salamat po. And bago ko po formal na tapusin ang ating webinar, Para sa ating mga viewers ngayon na nanunood, lalo na ang mga kabataan, don't be afraid to chase your dreams. Your success story will always begin, you know, by taking a step. By, by um, you know, just taking that first step. All our invited speakers, as you listen to them, it was really like a journey for them and it is still a journey for them. And all of our speakers this afternoon got to where they are right now because they took a leap of faith at nagsikap sila na habuli ng mga pangarap nila sa buhay. So if you think you have a good idea na pwedeng, you know, the bridge or maging tulay mo in achieving that definition of success in your life, like really go for it. Um, I also would like to take this opportunity to thank the Department of Trade and Industry Region 7 for organizing and initiating this very insightful webinar. Thank you for providing a platform for our viewers and entrepreneurs to learn from the best in the industry. Maraming maraming salamat talaga. So if you enjoyed our webinar and want to learn more, please watch all of our upcoming webinars. Of course, as always, our goal is to make as to make people and inspire everyone to kickstart our economic rebuilding and recovery process as a whole country, as a whole, you know, economy that we have right now. So please take note, and I am inviting you of the following dates for our Youth Entrepreneurship Program, or YEP, um, and other webinars that we have. On October 22, Introduction to Digital Marketing, October 23, Food Safety and Food Deliveries, October 28, you can see it on my screen, developing your business model. October 29, knowing and reaching out your cost to your customers. November 5, e-commerce, how to sell your products online. November 12, content marketing, using content to promote your brand. November 19, social media marketing, using social media to connect with your audience. November 26, Facebook and Instagram marketing tips for MSMEs. So these webinars are all DTI Region 7's initiative with, with the goal of encouraging businesses to adopt technology solutions and making it safer for both businesses and consumers like all the same time. So as community involvement is really critical in the program success, like your attendance guys your presence and your your participation dti7 hopes that the webinars will spark a business sector led by the youth and that movement for the adoption and uh, adoption of a better a smarter digital practices for budding and established young entrepreneurs in our generation so guys if you was if you were not able to catch what i said in terms of like you know the deadline the schedule for more information you can stay be you can be updated still by liking and following DTI7 at Facebook. So their Facebook name is DTI Re Region 7 Central Visayas. So follow them guys for more updates of all the insightful webinars that they will be, you know, publishing and organizing in the near future in up the in the upcoming days. And you can also subscribe to our Digital 7 digital channel on YouTube, okay? So again, thank you for joining Department of Trade and Industry Region 7's first Young Entrepreneurship Program, which is yet webinar. This is like the first of the four series. So we hope to see you in our upcoming webinars. And this has been your host, G, saying that initiative and collaborative effort, really, we will always be ready to recover as one safe community, whether or not coming from different sectors, youth or not so youth or feeling youth. You know, as a common quote from our national hero, Jose Rizal, but still holds true up to this day, ang kabataan ng pag-asa ng bayan. So for the youth out there, what are you waiting for? Get started and we're rooting for you. And that's it. This has been your host. Goodbye and stay safe everyone.